Hello, I hope you watched my video about how if you don't include religious art in your experience of art, you're cutting a vast swathe out and you don't need to believe in the religion to be a Catholic, to be a Protestant, in order to appreciate and adore and get so much out of the art. And this is a brilliant example of this. This is Fra Angelico, Fra meaning uh, friar. He, obviously he was a religious monk and he painted the most beautiful paintings. He is Quattrocento uh, Renaissance and we're going to be looking at his Annunciation. And this is it. The Annunciation is a very well-known piece in Catholic art and it is the seminal moment where the Archangel Gabriel comes to Mary to tell her that she is going to bear the Son of God. And here he is flying in with his exquisite wings. Fra Angelico painted the most amazing, amazing wings. And here he is very gently telling her what is going to happen. Now, needless to say, it's all a bit of a shock. So there, are, there can be various levels of shock uh, shown in these uh, Annunciations. I mean, it's a very, very popular piece. Even, even the uh, pre-Raphaelites uh, did a version of it. So what is an archangel? Well, uh, it's, he, they're not the highest level of angel. They're about the fourth level of angel. What makes them so important are that they're messengers to us lowly humans uh, from the divine reign. The highest level of angel are seraphim, and they are the ones that surround God's throne. They're not wasting their time giving us messages. They're looking after God. No, so there's uh, the three main archangels, and there are a lot of archangels in other religions uh, with different uh, names. But in the Catholic Church, there's Gabriel, who's the messenger, who's the one in this uh, painting. There's Michael, who's the protector, the military man. And then there's Raphael, the healer. And it comes from the Greek word meaning messenger or envoy. So there you go, a little lesson on archangels. So this painting is Quattrocento. It's the early Renaissance, really. Uh, it's, it's, we're not even into the middle of the 1400s yet. So that's just to place it, if you've been watching my other videos about where these um, art movements are placed within history. And this is Fra Angelico. He was a Dominican friar and he started with illuminating manuscripts and then got into painting. And uh, Vasari, who wrote the book, uh, The Lives of the Artists in 1550, uh, who we have so much information from, if he hadn't written these books, we would know so much less about these Renaissance artists, described him as a rare and perfect talent. It is impossible to bestow too much praise on this holy father who was so humble and modest in all that he did and said, and whose pictures were painted with, with such facility and piety. And he really means it. Vasari, you know, is quite honest about, <laughs> about what the painters get up to. And of course, we're going to, not long into Florence, we're going to have the mad monk, uh, Savonarola. So not all monks were full of such piety, but Fra Angelico was. And what I love about it is I think you can really see it in his works is this is this piety. So here we have the Archangel surprising Mary with this news. She's sitting there clearly in a very pious way and you can see behind her a little cell and this is a clue to where these paintings were created. And outside you can see this magical magical garden uh, with a fence around it. So the garden is often uh, uh, another attribute of Mary's because it suggests fertility. So lots of stuff growing, but the fence is there to suggest her piety, her modesty. And we will look at other of Fra Angelico's um, annunciations and see various other developments he includes. But in the main, in San Marco, they're all very uh, much on the plain side. So what was San Marco? It was this uh, convent uh, that was full of monks cells. So a very devout place. Here it is. You can go and visit it today. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. 
and uh, Cosimo de Medici was the patron behind uh, Fra Angelico painting in all these monk cells. So the monks would have a religious image to look at every day. And of course, the Medici were these, the, the uh, ruling uh, masters, the ruling family of Florence, without which I don't know how much of the Renaissance certainly in Florence would have happened. They were the most incredible patrons and they had a lot of money with which to commission this art. And this is the interior of San Marco. Honestly, if you're going to Florence, you have to go and see it. There were 44 monk cells. This is a corridor, but you can see the doors to the monk cells. Uh, just little, tiny, very, very plain rooms. And in each, Fra Angelico created a fresco. And this is what I mean. So here is a monk cell, and here is a really, really plain Annunciation. Again, you've got the Archangel with his amazing wings, and but you also have uh, Mary in devotion. So she's holding a book and she's kneeling. So he has surprised her in within her prayers, within her religious devotion. But apart from the Dominican monk uh, to the left, look how plain, how plain that background is. And it's, it's a complete reflection of the cells that these monks were in. Now Cosimo, of course, had his own cell. Given he'd given all this money, he had his own cell. And given he'd given all this money, he had the flashiest of all the frescoes in all the cells. And as with many uh, rich patrons, what they wanted was the adoration of the Magi. So this is the adoration of the three kings coming to uh, give their gifts to Christ. And of course, the reason rich patrons wanted this scene painted is because it could be very flash. Because these were uh, kings, they, these were men with a lot of money, a big retinue. They were giving very expensive gifts. So look at this fresco, it's much flasher than any of the others in San Marco, and that's because it's Cosimo's own private cell. So this is another of uh, Fra Angelico's uh, Annunciations. This isn't in San Marco. This is uh, in a museum in Cortona. But I just wanted to show you the differing varieties of uh, Annunciations that you could get. So we have a lot of uh, symbols in this one. Obviously we have Mary on this incredibly intense gold throne um, and again she's been surprised in her devotions. She has a book on her lap. We have the Archangel Gabriel in very beautiful robes as, very, as well as his beautiful wings speaking the words. Can you see the words in gold leaf coming out of his mouth and the beautiful gold leaf halos they both have. Above Mary there is the dove which is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Above the column between the two of them there is God and then in the garden we actually have a scene going on and this is quite common because this is Adam and Eve being banished from the Garden of Eden and what it is Adam and Eve created sin and so they were banished and here we have what is the beginning of our sins being forgiven because Christ is going to come, he's going to save our sins. And look, you see what I mean? How incredibly beautifully he painted. Look at the delicacy of their faces. Look at the intricacy of the gold leaf on the halos, on the writing, on the, on the borders, on the clothing. And the hands, there's just such grace. And she, Mary is wearing this veil that is almost completely sheer. There's such beauty and uh, tiny, tiny detail that you can really see that he um, put all his devotion into creating these Annunciations. So you walk up the stairs in the convent and there greeting you is this beautiful, beautiful, very, very simple Annunciation. What's fun, funny about, and very, very sweet in my view, about this particular painting are the columns. Because one of the central uh, uh, tenets of Renaissance architecture, 
and of course that went into painting as well, the portrayal of the architecture, were, were the classical orders of the columns. So there were the Greek orders and then the Romans added a couple themselves. So the Greek orders of columns were all about which story a column would go on in a building. So the lower story, the bottom story, would be the Doric column, where there was no plinth. It would just go straight into the ground, no fuss. They were wide and massive, a bit like elephant's legs. Then the next story up, you would have Ionic columns that were ram's horns. Can you see at the top, all, top the capital R, ram's horns? And then above that would be the much more delicate Corinthian columns, and they had acanthus leaves at the top. And look what our darling, darling Fra Angelico has done. At the front, we have the Corinthian columns, and down the side, we have the Ionic columns. Well, that would have never happened in a million years on a Renaissance building. And it just makes me even more fond of him because he is going for what looks beautiful. And my goodness, does it look beautiful. So there we have it, Fra Angelico's Annunciation, one of the most beautiful artists of the Renaissance, both inside and out.